Yo guys and welcome to the aquatic stage walkthrough. During production and the process of making this, many of you had noted about how you cannot play this yourself due to not having Spore, not having a DLC or what have you, and therefore I'm more than happy to demonstrate this walkthrough for you guys to not only show the gameplay itself but also have a bit of an idea as to why I did certain things in the end and that way you guys just have like a little bit of extra aquatic stage content to enjoy. The description for the adventure in the end is the stage was made in the spirit of the campaign between the cell stage and the creature stage. It's challenging and requires some awareness and experimenting. Read the acts and figure them out. There's also 10 total easter eggs and references to spot. And as it says ahead of us, the grand blue void is abundant with life, friendly and danger alike. But the planet is in turmoil due to the asteroid impact. Can you survive to prosper for another era? So right there, right off the bat, I'm setting the stage that this is indeed as part of the campaign. The idea I had is that the planet was going to be very volatile, very dangerous, because in the actual campaign itself, you just launch into the creature stage, onto the land, you have no option of like having an underwater civilization, which many people wanted. And so I wanted to stay true to that and give a reason as to why. So now that we have entered the brand new aquatic stage and... <laughs> whatever visual glitch that is which i swear never happened during testing oh that is just typical you're not the only cell that has made it this far there are many other creatures to fill out the food chain both friendly and aggressive familiarize yourself with the environment now the point in this act is as i said to familiarize yourself with the environment there are a lot of like little hidden secrets here and there certain items which could be used in certain ways i put a lot of emphasis on nests as that's going to be a major feature later on, which is what we'll be looking at in Act 2. And overall, just have the player, like, encourage them to check out the area to see, like, all the lovely props that people have made. We have this all interesting feature here, which is a corpse with a very, very frequently respawning chunk of meat. That way, if the player is ever in trouble, they can reliably come here to heal up. But that being said, though, if you tread too closely, you will get these parasites that will come over and attack you, and they can be a bit of a pain. Not the worst, but a bit of a nuisance. And, like I said, encourage the player to move around. So we go down this little tunnel here. There's not, it's not really any right way or wrong way to do this. There are a couple of different ways you can complete each objective. I've made it fairly open, so it's very, very, very easy to trigger the next act. There's also, as we're about to see here, the case of hazards, which has unfortunately nuked that poor epic in the background there. I opted to enable hazards because, like I mentioned earlier, this aquatic stage, this planet is in turmoil and things are very, very hostile. But on the plus side, as you wander about your travels, you will encounter your own kind, which have the option to ally into your own pack, which will help you out, give them a little bit of an extra edge, or if you so wish, you can play solo. So now that we have our own little buddy, it is time for Act 2. The ocean is dangerous and your journey has only just begun. Begin with finding shelter, breaking its door and gathering resources to claim it. A nest may protect you later. And that is alluring to the fact that, yes, these nests may actually prove to be very, very useful later on. In some situations, depending on the luck of the player or potentially the poor luck, what can happen is that the player might just be completely screwed. They might be in danger, not enough health potions or anything like that. They need protection and they can go unlock protection by going to shelter. The idea is that you have to make your own shelter, however, so the player is encouraged to check around, like we did earlier, explore the environment, look at all these little objects here, and especially the fact that all these little creatures here are carrying the objects as well, so you're contesting, you've got to fight them and get the objects too, and that way you bring it all to a nest and you will gradually break down the barriers and claim your new home. You can do this as many times as you want, the more you do it, the more safe areas you unlock, as well as the more consumables, the more... Uh, little healing power-ups, potentially damage power-ups or shield power-ups depending on which ones you unlock. It just gives you more and more options. Oh boy, looks like the poor epic died the second time, that's unfortunate. Well, it happens unfortunately, as we stated, this aquatic stage is vicious. So, now that we've finished making our first nest, and mainly now that we've introduced a player to the concept of making nests, we now move on to act number three. Be adaptive, the sea is rich with opportunities. Explore the caves in the coral forest, examine the hard exterior of abandoned shells, and test your streamlined body against the seagrass. This objective is both vague and very, very obvious. It does take like a little bit of thinking, a little bit of a riddle kind of playing on here. But if you take it very literally by checking out the caves, the long grass, 
and the hardened shells, you'll realize that all these different things give you power-ups. The hardened shell, the idea being that, say, you are any sort of a hermit crab kind of creature, you pick up the shell and protect you for a while, you take less damage. Another idea is being able to swim through the long, tall grass and they give you a speed boost. And of course, the final one is to check out the caves because they're not exclusive to the shallows they're also available in the core forest and they again have even more lucrative bonuses than before it's just if you're willing to unlock them or not so now that the player has been introduced to all these various power-ups bonuses and a general mechanic to the stage we now move on to act number four search for the bones of fallen creatures and observe their surroundings compete with stronger creatures and show them who's boss the bigger the pack the better this is again a bit of a riddle a bit of a one to figure out but it is quite straightforward now the main thing here is to check out bones, which just like in the creature stage, you pick up bones to find extra parts and evolve your creature. Unfortunately, that is a mechanic I am unable to add in Galactic Adventures, but I did still try to allure to it in the fact that rather than using the bones to evolve your creature as a next best alternative, I wanted the bones to be placed in strategic places for the player to take note and see what else they can get. So in some cases, the bones will be next to a cave, which may have a lucrative power-up, in another case, the bones may be next to a health power-up to heal you up. This one in particular, for example, has got a lot of health, a lot of shielding, and again, just more progress towards the campaign. And now that we're all nice and shielded up, we're big and powerful, we can go ahead and start killing some of these other creatures. The point in killing the other creatures is, again, to have that same creature stage feel where you are competing for the environment. And then the tooltip specifies, the bigger the pack, the better. Because there are quite a few different creatures around here and it's going to take the player quite a long time to figure out what they should be killing. It's intentionally vague, it's intentionally broad to encourage the player to figure it, figure it out, run around to the attack, keep on killing things just like you've been in a creature stage until eventually you, you make the right type of progress. Now that being said, I have tuned it to be in favour of the player, one by giving them a hint, and two by making certain creatures more common than the other ones, meaning the player is more likely to attack the common ones, and therefore more likely to make progress. And like I mentioned earlier, you do occasionally find a couple of your own species just hanging around, which can always help you in your travels and battles, especially as some of the creatures around here are quite punchy. Now, since my previous ally had unfortunately been killed by the hazards of the planet, I do indeed need a new one. So here is Bob. We now have Bob to help us in our journeys, and it is time to attack some creatures. The bigger the pack, the better. Well, I'm definitely seeing these type of whale creatures here a lot. The alpha... It is an alpha, it's got a little bit of high HP, it could, pot it could potentially be stronger. I'm going to stay away from that one. But what I would like to find is one of its smaller minions that tend to follow them around. Now here's another rather common creature, but this one is quite punchy, so I'm going to have to be very, very careful taking these on. In fact, oh, it nearly had me right there. But fortunately, I'd already gone ahead and unlocked a couple of the extra nests earlier, so I already have multiple means of healing up. Let's return to this one here that we unlocked earlier. And if we're lucky, we'll even get a shield power up in the process. Ah, uh, not this time, it hasn't respawned yet. But that's fine, now we're healed up, we can take on another one of these creatures. And this is where having an ally really comes in handy. Now that we've found a couple of these other more common species, it's time to show them who's boss and try and get a bit of a snack in the process. Right, so one more should about do it to show them who's boss. So now that we've exported the environment, gotten a bunch of those skeletal upgrades, and of course defeated a couple of the other residents, it's our time to move on to act number five. There's always bigger fish. There's a whole great ocean before you. Use those fins, flex that tail, and explore what's out there, and search for the deep dark. Now this was a stage I originally wanted to be fairly simple, fairly vague, because at the end of the day, all this really is is just like more of like a little bonus transition. Since, unfortunately, Gatic Adventures, I never could truly implement a way for the player to swim up and down. I could only do it via levels and objects. And so there wasn't really any way that I could for sure turn it into like any sort of objective. So it is more like a transitional kind of stage. You have the option to explore this great big giant area, which does have a fair few amount of Easter eggs that should a player be willing to search and find them. Or, as the description tells you, go and search for the deep dark. So you're gonna be wanting to keep an eye out for something, something eye-catching. So as we traverse the environment, this little smoke area here draws in your eye and the intention here was it was meant to be eye-catching and make the player think, ooh, what's over there? Fortunately, I feel like the fog really helped in that case, the moving smoke, as well as the 
very opposing giant spiky stones. And as you get closer, you can definitely see for sure there's something down there. A little bit of seaweed, some kind of skeleton. This must be the deep dark. And upon finding it, we transition to act number six, the dark deep. Remember those meteor chunks from when you were an itty bitty cell? Go find more to aid you in a savage and hostile environment. So that one kind of speaks for itself there. Oops, first of all, we're already getting attacked. As it says, this is a very, very hostile environment. This wants to be one of the harder areas in the aquatic stage. As well as everything being dark and gloomy, things are very powerful and pose a very huge risk, such as there, I'm now 1 HP. Now, fortunately, our creature is equipped with the ability to stealth. So now I can quite happily move past all the other creatures and really focus on healing more than anything else. Like I said, this area here is very, very brutal and the entire stage is intended to feel like a great big danger. This is why you want to evolve and move into the creature stage as quickly as you can. So as we traverse through the trench, we see this rather larger area here. The idea being is that this is at the bottom of a much larger trench. We have some rather ugly and very terrifying creatures here. Like I said, we are currently stealthed, so we are safe as long as we don't get attached or noticed by it. But we also have like a fair amount of little crawlers here. Again, just all little things to give you a bit of a hard time. As stated earlier, this environment is very, very hostile and it is your duty to just fight back, prove that you are the stronger creature. And as hinted at, if you get the meteor fragments just like you did in the stealth stage, whereas then they'd give you parts, here it gives you a damage boost. These are rare and very, very lucrative. So now that we're on full HP, let's go ahead and kill a couple of these scorpions that have been giving us a hard time. It's only fair to show revenge, isn't it? Let's see if we can find any more. We've got one of these ill creatures here as well. Another very, very aggressive and annoying creature. And make our way back forwards. Now, this area here is very, very linear for a very important reason. As we are deep in this oceanic trench, and as we are stealthed up so we don't get attacked by this scary thing, <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, the rogues and the epics are not meant to be messed with. Oh, <laughs> careful of that. As we diverge deeper into here, we have this great big skeleton, these very unusual looking predators. Everything's very, very large, spiky, just overall kind of terrifying looking. And mainly, as you traverse deeper in, you'll start to notice a bit of a volcanic area. Fortunately, we are underwater, so we can just swim above the area and not really worry about getting damaged by the lava. But it goes to show just once again just how unstable the area is and how much of a risk we are being here. But of course, it's time to continue with the act. We're going to get more of these meteor chunks, going to defeat more of these annoying pains in the butt. Now, it's very important that I stealth back up. That way, I don't get attacked by that big guy in the distance over there. Very careful. I've got the final bit of meteor. And the volcano is erupting. As you can see there... Great big explosions, lots of banging. It is time to get out. Again, it really puts the emphasis on this stage and this planet being volatile. Too deep, too dangerous. It's not safe, the ocean is too volatile to inhabit. Find others of your species and return to the shallows. Make use of the landmarks that you have found in your travels. So this, so fortunately we do have like this very, very linear path. We also have one ally here that just miraculously spawns. And it's time to protect him and take him home. Since, after all, this is all about evolution. You want to have as many of you surviving as you can. Therefore, it is very, very important that you try and keep your allies with you and take them to safety. That way, you as a species can thrive. Now, we are on the timer. It is time to just get out. And as the objective says, get to the shallows. So now we just have to hope that nothing stops us in our tracks, such as these annoying little scorpions here, or even worse, the actual planet hazards themselves. Oh god, look at that for an unlucky hazard right at the entrance of the coral forest. But now that we've made it, the timer is gone, we are safe in shallower land, or shallower waters more like, and we move on to the final act. Return to the shallows. The eruption has caused the sea to wash up the bodies of less fortunate creatures, and has emboldened some of the surface inhabitants, causing them to hunt in the shallows. Fight back and evolve. Now this one is, in essence, a bit of a boss fight, as was really, really heavily requested by you guys. So we actually do have a boss fight, 
and let me say it is quite tricky. Now you as the player, since the very beginning of the stage, you have been encouraged to explore the environment, to check out for any power-ups, any objects, anything you can take advantage of, you've made your own nests for shelter, in order to help you in this finale and this boss fight, because this rogue willisaur, as mentioned earlier, is a rogue, they hurt a lot, and this one has exceptionally more HP and it's very aggressive. Although it does seem to be aggressive on the wrong thing right now. <laughs> But don't be fooled though, as soon as you attack it, it will probably attack you back. So when it comes to this boss fight, there are multiple ways of trying to achieve this. You could either just do the good old classic epic strat of spit and run, spit and run. Fortunately with the additions of the various nests and such, you can actually heal yourself or just reset the aggro and hide away from it. You could probably glitch it out in some way if you really tried. Those options do exist. You could hide behind other creatures for the Willisaur to attack before you and try sneaking attacks in between. You could probably try to lure the resident predator of this area into it and, you know, try to get them to fight, although it probably wouldn't go down very well. But overall, the easiest way of doing this, which would be discovered by the most observant in the earlier stages, is, is the use of these little urchins. Now, think about it for a moment here. This urchin looks pretty damn terrifying and very painful, so imagine lobbing this at such a large creature like that. Well, let's see what happens. <laughs> yep, just, just what you'd think. It does a fair amount of damage. Now, like I said, this is the easiest and technically intended way of doing it. Although, it is admittedly quite obscure. But when so much of the early game was encouraging a player to, you know, really check out their environment to see what they can do. Not to mention that it is a thing in the creature stage to actually stun creatures with rocks and sticks. That is very, very much a possible thing. It's not entirely out there, it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility that such a mechanic could exist in the aquatic stage as well as the creature stage. And let's be honest guys, it's kind of humorous too. Let's get our final urchin over here. Chuck it at that big ravenous epic, if this guy doesn't get in the way. <laughs> and let's try and get that shot. And the epic is down, and you as a creature has proven to be resourceful enough and adapted enough to survive the turmoil of the Quick Sage and move on to the creature stage. Congratulations, your species reigns supreme and has earned the right to escape the malicious sea and flourish in a bright and airy world. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that is the aquatic stage. Like I mentioned earlier on, it was all tuned and treated to be in between the cell and creature stages. I wanted to be part of the campaign. I tried to give it that bubbly positive wording that Maxis worked very well known for. I tried to keep it the same vibe and feel as the rest of the campaign. While also trying to be a bit mysterious and not only making things vague, but trying to help a bit of a helping hand towards the player. And overall just introduce like a variety of new mechanics and just things to make things feel fresh and enjoyable. Overall, I personally love it. I am really, really happy if this turns out. I severely hope that those playing it, and especially those playing it before this video comes out, <laughs> I wish them all the best of luck. I hope they enjoy the new feeling, you know, the feeling of the unknown in Spore. We've, had it, we've not had it for such a long time. I uh, hope they enjoy figuring things out and, you know, really having to adapt, really having to evolve in the game itself. I hope they enjoy that. And overall, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. Cheers.